Join us for the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Cook and Cassius, and some very special guests, Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So in the words of Eddie Hearn, you get up, you dress up, and you fucking show up. Oscar Bevis, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by the last. Delighted to be joined by Alfie Whitten. Alf, good to see you, my friend. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Thanks for coming over to my manor. UB10 Hillingdon, the best place in the world to do, <laughs> to do this interview. Um, Saturday night, of course, things didn't go your way. We've got a lot to talk about. Um, I kind of want to go step by step. Um, we didn't get to speak beforehand, so I think that's probably the best place to start. Um, how did you feel going into this fight? Yeah, um, it had been a great camp. I was feeling uh, 100%. Like literally, I was saying to my trainer the other day, like nothing that we, we could have done. We couldn't have done anything different. Like I felt as primed as possible. Like I felt ready to go. I was in a great mood. I was buzzing. Like even in the changing rooms and everything before, I was relaxed. Like I'm feeling. I was feeling great. I was feeling sharp on the pads. Had my hands wrapped well. Like everything was going perfect. And um, even in terms of like the walkout and that, the, the your call was was buzzing. Like it was a sellout. It was booming. And I'd not experienced your call like that. But I really feed off things like that. I got up onto the stage early, about to do the ring walk because I walked first, and I was really feeding off the atmosphere. And I was yeah, I was feeling great, mate. To be honest, and, uh, yeah, no, nothing nothing had gone better really. Did training feel different because it was a chance for your first title? Obviously, any fight. You give 110%, graft in the gym. But was there just that little bit of a different feeling because you're like, yeah, this is serious now. Kind of done the learning phase. Like, I'm in title territory. Was training any different? Yeah, so of course training was tougher. Like you spar longer, everything's more intense. But um, yeah, no, it's definitely nice visualising who you're fighting because I've had it before where you don't really know who you're boxing until fight week. So um, yeah, no, it was nice to, to be visualising a style and uh, be able to analyse what someone's doing and, and work from there. What did you think of the fight when you kind of combined you two and how it would work on paper? Um, yeah, like I said, I said in another interview or a po podcast saying that I'd beat him any way I wanted because I, I do feel like that. Like I do feel like if he wants to have a boxing match, I feel like I'd be too smart for him and I felt like I, I could have had it like proper war with him if I wanted. Because uh, being a shorter fighter, sitting inside, I think that would have worked and played into my hands in the end, especially over 10 round distance. I'm kind of going to have to give you the floor here. Um, people who would have seen the fight will obviously know what would have happened. If you haven't, I guess go back and watch. Um, but I've kind of got to give you the floor for this bit um, to talk us through that, that, that first round. Yeah, so um, the whole thing happened very quickly. Like, like, well, I think it was all within the first minute of the fight, to be honest, which which I'm gutted about. Obviously, I would have wanted the uh, wanted to sort of show people the level I'm at. That's what the whole fight was about for me. It was it was going to be like a coming out fight for me. I was feeling like this is it. This is a, a, a massive moment for me. And um, yeah, settled into the fight, landed a few jabs, and yeah, was was settling in nice. Um, he caught me with a couple of jabs, and I think I think with, with like with one of the jabs he's thrown, he's caught me with this little nick under my eye here, and the commentary pick up on it. And I think that's where a little bit of controversy and confusion is coming from, because uh, yeah, he's jabbed me. I've lost my footing and I've I've, I've fell back, sort of thing. I've, I've I've stumbled back. He's then jumped on me like any fighter would, like a big moment. Um, yeah, he's tried to put the pressure on after that. He's thrown a hook slash uppercut thing. I don't know what you'd call it, but he's thrown the right hand in some way. I've rolled underneath it and come away, and that's bomb. We've turned, clashed heads heavy, and um, he's split my eye. And yeah, like almost instantly, I'm saying to the, I'm trying to signal to the ref, like, that is his head, that is his head. The ref's looking right at it. I don't know how he's seen it. But um, yeah, I don't know if you've fucking seen in the bassy's head, yeah? But that thing's like a wrecking ball, yeah? I think you'd knock heavyweights out with that head, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, I've got caught with that. I've been dazed as anything. I didn't really know where I was after the head clash. And it was just fucking downhill from there, mate. And he's, yeah, fair play to him. He's, he's jumped to me and done what he's got to do, like you would in a boxing ring. But yeah, um, yeah, that was it, first round. I'm going to put 
a picture of the car over the screen because I saw the one of you on the medical bed mm. afterwards when you're getting it stitched up. Yeah. Um, it's a fucking shocker. It's an horrible cut. Yeah. Um, how does it feel now before we kind of talk about the other stuff? Um, it's all right to be honest. Yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit sore, but it's opening up now, so I can see out of it. Yeah, and no, that's all right. So getting hit with the head. Um, I asked you this before, and but just kind of on camera, it, you get that same feeling as being hit by a punch of the day's feeling, but it's it's a more blunt kind of. You know when you've been hit yeah. by a head. You know when there's a head clap. Yeah, you can feel the difference for sure. It's not it's not the same as a glove. Who's like that been hit by a bit of concrete? Do you know what I mean? I felt like I got it by a train after getting it by his head, to be fair. Mm. Do you kind of look back at it and I know it's hindsight and it's obviously a very difficult situation to have to overcome. Do you look back at it and think there's anything I could have done? Um, yeah, I think, yeah, in, in hindsight, there was like maybe things I could have done. I've never been in that position where I've got a survive around if you know what I mean like where I've got to fucking work try and hold on and and do all those tricks that the journeymen do in there do you know what I mean and, and buy yourself time and I've never been in that position so yeah I was just trying to move and get away but I was trying to do that with like no like nothing like I had no reactions do you know what I mean I had no legs underneath me like I was trying to do all that blind really couldn't really see much on that out of that eye like I, when the backhand come for the stoppage in the corner I've moved around to him, I've had him on my left, and I'm standing there, I've got my, I'm thinking, I've got my right hand on my eye, and I'm thinking, what the fuck am I doing? Just took the backhand straight on the chin. But yeah, like, like I say, I, I, yeah, I didn't really know where I was after that head clash. What would you have been expecting, or what would you have wanted from the referee when you was kind of signalling that it's a head clash? Would you have wanted the ref to kind of stop the fight, take you over to the corner, get kind of a, a doctor assessment, I guess? Yeah, I think that yeah, that would have been the the best approach because um, there was a knockdown like soon after soon after the uh, the head clash, he, he knocked me down, and I was on my feet for the majority of the count, and I felt like that was a good opportunity for the ref, give me the count, see that I'm alright, and then potentially pull me over to to the doctor to have a look at it because yeah, or even just have a look in my eyes. I, yeah, to be honest, I didn't. I thought I was maybe a little bit concussed, but yeah, that's it. In terms of a first career defeat on paper, um, has it kind of, I'm going to say fully set in yet, obviously everyone takes defeats in different ways, I know it's not like you've got in there and you've had your head boxed off for 12 rounds, um, but how do you kind of take a defeat, has it fully set in, did it set in when you'd left York Hall, did you kind of have the moments where you sat down even in your room on your own and thought, fuck, like, how's the, the defeat process kind of been? Yeah, no, it's, um, it's of course it's tough to swallow, but like, what makes it a little bit harder is seeing all the um, the post-fight stuff, like interviews and things like that. And in the stand in there, he's got a cut on his head and he's telling everyone he's a puncher. And I'm thinking, mate, I don't know, he's just as delusional as his fans, I think, just to fucking, to say that, <laughs> to say that he's now a puncher. He's standing there with a cut on his head. Like, it couldn't be more clear to me what's going on. You've got to hit someone fucking hard with your head to cut your head on their eye socket. Do you know what I mean? Like that that's was that's was harder to swallow. But yeah, like on paper, he's probably just gonna he's gonna most likely just do a runner. Do a runner with the win. Great result for him. Nice first round TKO win over Alfie Winter. He's probably laughing. Yeah, but uh yeah, hopefully he he can um he can do the right thing and because and, if it was me I'd be losing sleep if there was any doubt around one of my wins and I'd wanna put that right. But um we'll see what he's about, won't we? Do you know what I mean? Well, you said you'd be losing sleep. My next question was going to be, can you understand why, in any perspective, um, whether it's something you would do or not, I don't know, um, but can you understand why, when he's won the Southern Area title, his first belt in the first round, he is going to be running around mm -hmm. celebrating and he is going to be running around bowling about with the belt and giving it, because what, I think four, we're four days, five days since the fight, so can you understand why yeah. perhaps he's, yeah. Of course, yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, like, listen... He can have all his celebrations all he wants, throw all the parties he wants and uh, while my eye heals up. But yeah, once all that heals up and then his celebrations maybe die down and he comes to terms with the fact that he's used his massive nut to put it in my head. But maybe he'll, he'll go, yeah, let's, let's actually put this right and let's, um, yeah, let's go again. But yeah, I can understand it. Yeah, you're going to be buzzing, but just at least maybe live, be a little bit honest and say, yeah, we did clash heads, but it's boxing and you've got to do what you've got to do in there. I'd say that would be a, a bit of a fairer response, but 
to start telling people he's a puncher now, fucking hell, nuts. Do you think anytime soon there'll be a point where perhaps you two even have a conversation? Because it's not like you and Indar have got this mad hatred between you. Obviously, like you said, he's celebrating how he's doing his thing with his fans. Um, but I'm sure at some point, perhaps, even if it's a chat on Instagram or yeah. a chat over the phone, you can both have, have a talk about this. 100%. I'll go down and see him at his gym and say hello to him. Like, it's not even a big deal. Like, it go... doesn't need to be difficult, this no. whole process, does no, it? No, no, mate. There's no, there's, like, there's no needle there. I just want him to come out and be honest with everyone and be honest with himself and, and see if he wants to put that right. Because it's not like it's a personal problem between me and him. If I see him, I'll say the same stuff I'm saying to you now because, uh, yeah, I stand by what I say and I, and I do believe everything I'm saying to you. So I'm not going to be like saying one thing to you and then see him and go, oh yeah, well done Indy, you're a fucking good stoppage mate. Like, bollocks to that. I'll go and tell him, like, you use your head. Simple as that. Just kind of focusing on you and the process from now till whenever it is you're next in the ring. Have you been given a uh, kind of a timeline of when this will all heal, a timeline of when you can even think about a spar or potentially even stepping back in the ring? Yeah, so... Um, the doctor told me six weeks for sparring. Personally, I think I'll give it maybe. A... I thought it would be so much longer than yeah. that. Six weeks. That's... Yeah, it's not long, is it? Like a cut like this, you'd, you'd think it'd be a bit, little, a little bit longer. But uh, yeah, I'll probably give it eight weeks myself. And um, yeah, just because this is a career at the end of the day, I want longevity in the sport. So I don't want to, um, I don't want to rush it back and risk it reopening and things like that. Because the position of the cut, that could be a real problem. Um, what do you do meanwhile? I guess just kind of the, the training without sparring, I suppose. Yeah, the training without sparring, yeah. Um, I'll give myself a couple of weeks off of training anyway. I've had a very, very busy 18 months. I've had like eight fights in 18 months straight to the title fight. Like It's, it's been flat out for me. Um, but yeah, I'll rest up, eat some shit food, refuel, and uh, yeah, come back with a, a fresh mindset. Eat some shit food, I know. You feel me? That's what I've been doing for the last <laughs> 20 odd years. Um, you said you've had eight fights in this busy 18 months. Just kind of aside from the result and everything like that, how have you found those 18 months? Because growing up wanting to be a boxer, um, you're kind of doing it, you're living your dream and you will get to the level you want to get to. Um, yeah. You're going to have these bumps, but just kind of the whole thing of being a boxer. Um, you must be loving life and loving the whole process though. Yeah, I'm absolutely loving life. Yeah, 100%. Um, and, and there was moments on, on that night, Saturday night, like that I, I dreamed of, like walking out in front of a pack your call like his fans, my fans, the atmosphere was buzzing. So I want to say a big thank you to everyone who came out and supported. It made the night special regardless of how it went after that. So I really appreciate them. And um, yeah, no, it was, it, was, it was a big, big moment there. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm living my dream, mate. I'm, I'm, I'm training hard. I'm, I'm working towards my dreams and, and, and becoming what I want to become and what I believe I can become, which is a champion. So that's why I'm going to keep going, yeah. Just one final thing for me before we wrap this up. Um, I guess you can look at it this way. When you do get your hands on a belt, be it the Southern area, be it any other title, it's going to feel fucking sweet. Yeah, mate, 100%. It makes it that little bit sweeter now. But uh, yeah, we all have bumps in the road, innit? But it's, it's, not, it's not those bumps, it's how we, how we deal with them. So that's what we're going to do. Join us for the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Coogan Cassius, and some very special guests, Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So in the words of Eddie Hearn, you get up, you dress up, and you fucking show up.